funny look. Here's one of the main street. Oh, probably taken on one of their busy days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I wonder how the man got in there. Oh, I wonder. Well, look, Joan, here's one of the Miracle Pool, made famous by the healer. Oh, is that the healer with a long beard? <laughs> no, no. That's the moth hanging on that tree. It must be. Oh, Mrs. Hawkins, I forgot. Two pounds of absorbent gum. Evelyn, of all people. Hello, Joan. Oh, my dear. You look positively radiant. <laughs> I expected to see you in sackcloth and ashes. Did you think I came up here to do penance? I wasn't quite sure. But it's good to see you. Oh, Thorny, come here. I want you to meet Dr. Thornton. Thorny, this is Evelyn Allen. Thorny's the house physician over at the lodge. How do you do, Dr. Thornton? Good morning, Miss Allen. Evelyn left the pleasures of the flesh behind her in New York to come up into them thaw hills like a good campfire girl, to be a nurse or a nun or something. <laughs> oh, it isn't that bad, Doctor. Well, whatever it is, I must say it agrees with you. Ah, he comes to life. I'm up here working with Dr. Holden. Oh, yes, Holden. Isn't he the chap they call the healer? Yes. Oh, the one with the long beard. Oh, why, he's some sort of a nature faker, isn't he? He brews teas in a big black kettle while witches dance around on broomsticks. Nothing of the sort. He's doing a wonderful work here. Yes, I've never seen you looking better. Now, oh, Evelyn, don't get fussed. Forget about this great prophet. Come over to the lodge some night. We'll have a lot of fun talking about the people we used to know. Thanks, Joan. I'll try to. Thorny has to finish this season's correspondence. Goodbye, Miss Allen. Goodbye. I hope I see you again. Bye, Joan. Goodbye, everyone. This is the finest mesh we have. Friends of yours? Yes. Yeah. Just take it easy there a minute, Jimmy. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, Hello, boys. Doc. Say, I just came by your house, and Myra said for you to get along home. The mules kicked the side out of the barn, and she thinks Flossie's about due. What, again? Yeah. That cow always picks the darndest time. <laughs> Say, let me tell you fellas something. When the hitter gets through with me, I'm going to come back and show you fellas how to really sock the old baseball. Sure you will, Jimmy. We'll be waiting for you. You fellas come out to the pool in a couple of weeks, and Jimmy and I will take you on in a three-legged race. Will you, Dr. Holden? Of course. We'll be taking on all comers, won't we, Jimmy? You bet. You better be practicing up, too. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I wonder if that healer really can help him. I don't know. That New York doctor said that Jimmy is a helpless cripple. Poor child. There you are. Won't be needing those much longer, will we, soldier? No, sir. I see you got Jimmy. Yes, I finally persuaded his mother to let him go. Oh, I'm sure you're going to help him. I've had him a year ago. How are you making out with our ten dollars? I did the best I could. <laughs> I've gotten almost everything on the list. Morning, Doctor. How are you, Mrs. Hawkins? Fine, thank you. How's the postmaster? Spry as a two-year-old since you gave him those treatments. <laughs> What's this about work gloves and white socks at the bottom, Miss Evelyn? Do you want those? What's the total up without that? Ten dollars and fifteen cents. Well, uh, <clears throat> we'll pick those up later. Don't forget, we'll be expecting you over at the lodge. Oh, yes. This is Dr. Holden. Now, see, Dr. Holden. I've heard so much about you. How do you do? You'll excuse me, won't you? What do you think of it, Jimmy? Gee. Here, try it. Now, just lean forward and take hold of those handlebars. So that's your healer? Yes. 
attractive, isn't he? Yeah. Do you think I'll ever be able to ride one of these things? Of course you will, soldier. Bless my chevrons, look who's come to camp. Hello, Applejack. Hello, soldier. That's right, Jimmy. A good soldier always makes friends with the cook. Oh, he and I are old pals. He used to tell us kids how he won the war <laughs> with a barrage of apple pies. <laughs> You'll have to take your turn in the kitchen, please, if you're going to stay around here very long. Jimmy will be chasing you out of that kitchen in no time. Sure I will. Look. Well. The healer said that pretty soon I'll be riding that bike all over these hills. Didn't you? I sure did, Jimmy. And that reminds me, we better get organized. Well, see you later, Applejack. I see you. Now, Jimmy, I want you to think of that bicycle. That huge, shiny, deluxe truss frame with the mud guards and racing handlebars. And a coaster brake? And a coaster brake. You're sitting on it now, Jimmy. Your feet are reaching for the pedals. You stretch. Come on, stretch. More. Attaboy. Now you feel them, Jimmy. Those are the pedals. Now push. Hard. That's it, soldier. Left. Right. Left. Right. Come on, Jimmy. We're picking up speed. Lift those knees up high. Lift. Hi. That's it, soldier. Left. Right. Watch us go. Left. Right. Knees high. Bend. Bend. Gee, my knees did bend, didn't they? You bet. That's enough for your first ride. Now we're going for a swim. But I haven't been... I haven't been able to, to swim since I was a kid. That's nothing. You did it once. You can do it again. Now, take it easy. We're going to float a little bit and rest up from that ride. There. Just lean back. It's warm, Jimmy. It makes you feel strong. <laughs> I, I'm not heavy like I was. Of course you're not. You can swim, too, big fella. Now, just pull up your legs. That's it. Pull up and kick. Pull up. Kick. Pull up. Kick. I, I can kick. I did kick, didn't I, Doc? Of course you did, soldier. I saw it. And you saw it, too, didn't you? Yes, I saw it. It was wonderful. There you see. We're going to have to put in an order for that bicycle right away. <laughs> yes, sir. Of course, the bike will have to come from the factory, and that'll take a couple of weeks. Oh, I'll be ready for it. I was practically riding today. Well, a boy. Now, you go along with Martha and stretch out, big fella. Take good care of him, Martha. He's a special pal of mine. All right, Doctor. Don't forget a coaster break. He's better already, isn't he? Aren't you proud? Well, frankly, yes. Just to see some hope in that eager little face is a satisfaction. Sort of a challenge to keep on. You will. Ah. You'll cure him. It's the warm spring water, the kids themselves. Once they lose their fear... But what makes them lose it? You. Oh, I help a little bit. You take tragedies and give them happy endings. It's a slow process. But you make them help. You give them confidence in themselves. You give them faith. We can all use a little bit of that. You can't tell me you was going that fast on a bike. 
I tell you, I was going 60 miles an hour. 60 miles an hour. Yes, yeah, 60 miles an hour. Do you want to make something of it? Boom, boom. Take it away. Would you like some knife? No. Well, well, old Father Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you two been? Down to the village. Joan met an old friend. Yes, you remember, Evelyn Allen. Allen? Oh, yes, yeah, the family that went broke in the crash. What's she doing up here? She's with the healer. You mean, uh... The fellow that has the pool, that faker? Well, that pool is supposed to be almost miraculous. Yes, Dr. Holden's credited with several remarkable cures. Ah, Tommy Rod. He's just imposing on these ignorant country people. They fall for anyone who looks saintly and mumbles in his beard. <laughs> but, Father, this healer doesn't look saintly and he has no beard. Which reminds me, Thorny and I are going riding. Oh, are we? Now, listen. Now, look here. Here's your mail. Yeah, but now I want Come you on, to please. understand. Uh oh, uh, Bernie, Bernie. Come on. Do you wish some very nice. No! <laughs> but, Thorny, why worry? It's a lovely day. The sun shining, the birds singing. The open road stretching before us. Don't tell me you're not enjoying it. No, I'm merely suggesting it might add to my enjoyment if I knew where we were going, my dear. Wherever it is, we'll never get there at this rate. All right. Follow me. Oh, good. <laughs> hey, Grandpa, open the gate. End of the road, folks, and I ain't your grandpa. Well, we've come to see the doctor, darling. He ain't receiving today, and I ain't your darling. Well, I'm the house physician at the hotel. Don't need any today. And I'm Joan Bradshaw. And I'm Applejack, and you can't come inside. Okay, Grandpa. What happened? Horse bolted. There's blood. Concussion. Give me a hand. She doesn't respond. Do you think that... I'm afraid so. I've got to relieve that pressure. But we can't move her. No. But it must be done immediately. A brain operation? Here? I'm no surgeon. I couldn't begin. Will you help me? It's our only chance. We've got to hurry. I'll do anything I can, Doctor. All right, come on. Applejack, it's a serious operation. Telephone Martin Bradshaw at the lodge and keep everyone out of here until it's over. Yes, ma'am. Just that lamp so there's no shadow. That's good.
sponge. That's it, Doctor. Good. I'm Martin Bradshaw. What? Where? Inside. Uh, no one goes inside till the operation's finished. Operation? Yeah. Dr. Fulton? No, he ain't doing it. Why, who is? The healer. That faker. Hey, listen, listen. Take it easy, take it easy. And be glad there's a faker like him around here. If anything happens to her, I'll... The old what? I'll have him up for murder. Oh, never mind, never mind. Nothing's going to happen to her. That's all we can do now. You two better go out and get some fresh air. How is she? It's all over. She's going to be all right. I didn't believe it could be done, but he did it. I saw it with my own eyes. Are you sure? I've seen it done with the finest surgeons, but in there, in that shack, it was marvelous. All right, Mr. Bradshaw, you can go in. But don't disturb her. Of course, the man has a kind of Power, a magnetism. A great knowledge. He's an excellent surgeon. Of course. And I'm ashamed that I called him a faker. He saved Joan's life. But why is he wasting his time in a place like this? Hello, Mr. Evelyn! Hello, Jimmy! There's your answer. He's curing those little crippled bodies. Giving those children something to live for. To dream of. He's doing in his own small way what other courageous men are doing in Warm Springs, Georgia. And other orthopedic centers of this country. He's trying to find a cure for this terrible affliction. And hoping eventually to bring relief to the children all over the world. That's why he's wasting his time. In a place like this. Time's up. You've been sitting up 15 minutes. That's long enough. I am a little tired. But I know I look a sight. You should have seen yourself 10 days ago. Oh, I can imagine. Are you sorry I jumped into your life? I'm sorry you hurt yourself. But you don't mind my being here? No, not at all. From the impersonal way you say that, I know I look terrible. How's the invalid? Going very nicely. Well enough to realize how lucky I am that you were near, Doctor. Hello, Dad. How is the high explosive stomach behaving? Why don't you let Dr. Holden roll it over and see what's underneath? 
I'm sure he'd be able to help you. Couldn't you, Doctor? I've never paid much attention to dyspepsia, but I rather think it's cure as a matter of helping yourself. I wonder if he meant... Wait a minute, Doctor. What do you mean by curing myself? Just that. I want you to know that I've had some of the most expensive doctors in I America. I don't doubt it, but still, we never have dyspepsia around here. What? Then I suppose you have an expensive stomach. It isn't the original cost, it's the upkeep. Look, that square box is for after meat. This round one is for after fish. And this oblong box is for after fruit. This big box is for in-between meals. How serious are you about being cured? My health is the most important thing in my life. That is outside my business. Wait a minute, Doc. I'm on my vacation now. Well, if you want to do exactly as I tell you, I'll guarantee you can cure yourself. You're the doctor. When do I start? Right now. Throw those pills away. Throw that cigar away. Why, this is my last one. Throw it away. You mean no smoking? Not for months to come. That was a Corona Corona. Now find Applejack and tell him he's a new bull cook. Applejack? Applejack. The new bull cook. Miss Evelyn, the healer wouldn't be fooling me, would he? How about the bicycle, I mean? Do you think I'll ever be able to ride it? I'm sure you will, Jim. You're getting stronger every day. Maybe, but... Seems such an awful long way to go. Yes, it is a long way, Jimmy. But you'll do exactly as Dr. Holden tells you, and the first thing you know... Come on, now. Where'd you get the money for this thing, anyway? Well, <laughs> I practically found it. Practically? Yeah, I won it from Bradshaw. <laughs> Hello, soldier. How'd it go? <laughs> Fine. Did he have a good workout? Yes, he's trying very hard. That a boy. Now you run along to Martha for your sun bath. Yes, sir. Game kid. Yeah. Did you see his face? Uh huh. Come on, let's get this thing unwrapped. Hey, Jimmy! Is it mine? Of course it is. I just wanted to see if you could obey orders. <laughs> there you are. So you're a 
poker player, huh? Smart of her. Still think you can make those inside straights? Well, if that's where the money goes, I can keep trying. Gosh, it's got everything. Sure it has. Deluxe truss frame, cushion seat, rubber grips. And a coaster brake? And a coaster brake. <laughs> Excuse me, I'd better go in and see my patient. Gee, he's great. Thanks a lot for saying I worked hard. And I will from now on. You gotta come through for a pal like that. Don't you? Don't you, Miss Evelyn? Yes, you do, Jimmy. Doctor. Haven't you been neglecting me? Oh, I hope not. How do you feel? Much better. How do I look? Much better. We'll have you out of here in a few days. My heart. It's pounding. I'm sure it's much too high. I'm counting. It's very pleasant. <laughs> you lost count. Am I here socially or professionally? Don't you ever combine the two? Really, I have a lot of work to do. Oh, if you must. Oh, doctor, do you mind helping me down? No, not at all. You ought to be spanked. Uh, that's right, those instruments go in the sterilizer. Impetuous, isn't she? Yeah. Why the frown, darling? You ought to be ashamed. Ashamed? Of what? Ashamed of yourself. Of your cheap gratitude. Trying to hurt my feelings. Oh, Joan, he saved your life. And I offer him myself. Is that cheap? Yes, it is. He isn't interested in you or your silk nightgowns or. Why not? He's a man, isn't he? Besides, if you're so sure he's not interested, why the indignation? I don't want to see him sidetracked from his work, even for a minute. You're not fooling me, darling. You love him. You want him for yourself. Yes, you're right. I do want him, but I want him for those crippled children. And I love him enough to want to help him. Well, at least we've let our hair down. You want him for the children, and I want him for myself. I wonder which of us is the liar. You don't have to answer that. I only know that he's too fine for what you want to make of him. You seem quite sure of what I want to make of him. I'm quite sure you're thinking only of your own vanity. Well, since freshness seems to be the order of the day, I'm sure you're nothing but a high-minded sap. Well, now we understand one another. Yes, darling. And won't it be fun? Of that, will it? Ain't good for you. 
How do you feel after dinner? The way I've been feeling these last few days, man, you're a miracle worker. You're wasting your time here. I mean, outside in a big city, you'd get somewhere, be appreciated. We appreciate him. Well, look at me. A few months ago, I was no better than a log of wood. Now... Now well, you're going to be a bike rider. And that means you have to go to bed. Oh, stop. Come on. Uh, we'll see you later. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, soldier. See you tomorrow. I mean, uh, how did he happen to choose this spot? He didn't have nothing to do with it. He was born here. Went away for a while, but he had to come home. But this... No buts. Wait till I get you on the woodpile tomorrow. There you are, soldier. What did Mr. Bradshaw mean uh, about the city? Bradshaw's a big city fellow himself. He means well, but he doesn't know anything about country folks like us. <laughs> I'll say you don't. Uh, get your sweater. Shh, quiet, you two. Do you want to wake up the whole camp? That's the time she got you. <laughs> Stick with me, soldier. We couldn't help it, lady. No, it slipped. <laughs> you better slip into bed, young man. That's for the doctor. Only two helpings of corn mush for breakfast. <laughs> That's all right, Doc. I'll split mine with you. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. A conspiracy. Good night, pal. Good night, Doc. You must have started wrong. Maybe. But as soon as I said something about Holden's leaving here, everybody froze. Well, I think the sanitarium is a great idea. You do want to help, don't you, Dad? Of course. I want to do something substantial for the man who saved my daughter's life. Then just give me your support and watch me put it over. We were just talking about you, Doctor. You were? Miss Evelyn. Yes, Jimmy? The healer would never leave us, would he? To go to the city or something? Of course not, Jimmy. He couldn't leave the pool. I appreciate your interest. But my work's here with the children. Now, wait a minute, Doc. I know you're using your own money to keep this place going. Yes. And a little bit that my people can afford to pay. Must be a tight squeeze. It is awkward at times. But don't you see? You can do all the good you're doing here and more. If you'll only let Dad convert the lodge into a sanitarium. You'll have every convenience known to science at your command. You'll have assistants and nurses and all the help you need. You'll be multiplying yourself a thousand times. You're walking very much better. With you to help me, I could fly. <laughs> Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Doc. She's getting along beautifully, isn't she? Yes, isn't she? He isn't quite persuaded about the sanitarium, but I have hope. Come along, Doctor. Come along, Doctor. Uh, Jimmy. What are you laughing at? I'm 
funny bone. Bull cook. Do you mind if we sit down for a while? I'm beginning to feel a little tired. No, of course not. Maybe you've attempted too much. Well, you're the best judge of that. After all, you're my doctor. I want to talk to you seriously. I've decided that you're going to be rich, distinguished, and famous. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, but you are. You must be. Look, down there, those little shacks and that little pool, those are your past beginnings. But down there, there lies wealth and fame. There's your future. There are all the kings. Don't you see that you're not being fair? You have a great gift. I serve only a few. Think of all the good you could do with more money. We'll remodel the lodge. We'll make a great clinic out of it. And with you in charge, it'll become a mecca of suffering humanity. Yes, sir? Eight different doctors have diagnosed my case. Did any of them agree on anything? Yes. Each one said I owed him a thousand dollars. This place has got them all whipped. All they did for my money was ask me a lot of questions. Didn't they take your pulse? No. They left me that. <laughs> And can you imagine, my husband tried to get me to go to a cheaper place. <laughs> How's your health? That's the good. It hasn't been drunk lately. Now, that being the case, here's to health. And health resort, like this one. A pill a day, and you can do just as you please. Uh, and if you won't take the pill? Nobody gets unreasonable. The patient is always right. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we... Uh... It's my turn. Joan, this can't go on. It's all a mistake, a terrible mistake. You've done a fine job. You've built a wonderful sanitarium, and you've equipped it beautifully. But I'm fed up with serving a bunch of people like those, and they're not my idea of suffering humanity. Well, if we're going to have patients, they might as well be wealthy ones. Why, well, I haven't even been near the pool in over a month. And when I think of those people compared to Jimmy and those children, this all seems so utterly unimportant. Is it unimportant that I want it this way? I sold Dad the idea of the sanitarium. I sold you the idea of leaving the pool. I worked and maneuvered to make you the most important, the most successful, the wealthiest surgeon in the country. Can it be possible you don't know why? Do you think I did it all out of a sense of gratitude to the man who saved my life? Ever so long ago, I decided the man I married must be distinguished, rich. Then we met, and I made up my mind to marry you. Is that unimportant? No, of course not, Joan. I, I didn't realize that. I, what is, I had no idea. But I didn't. Please don't think I'm unappreciative, Joan. I don't want appreciation. Joan, I... It's all right, darling. We'll discuss it later. Well, I know, but... It's an appendectomy in B, Doctor. Acute. Mike's getting kind of rusty. You think it's because I can't ride yet? Oh, no, Jimmy. I don't think it's your fault at all. But I was hoping that by now... No, but I guess the healer is pretty busy. That must be it. Come on, Jimmy. Let's get out of those things.
Things sure seem different around here, don't they, Miss Evelyn? Stop talking, Jimmy. Think of your exercises. One. Two. One. Two. One. Stretch. Two. Jimmy, let's start it again. Oh, look what? here, Miss Evelyn. You don't need to stay around here with a big fella like me. I can take my own exercises. You go on up to the cabin. I'll have Martha take me out. Okay, soldier. Aren't you even going to speak to me? Go on back to supper resort where you belong. I'm tired of it. My dyspepsia's come back. Well, it's your own fault. Miss Martin, don't forget what I told you about tonight. There'll be 14 guests. You'll need place cards and make all arrangements to serve dinner outdoors. Yes, Miss Bradshaw. And please be more careful about the wine this time. It should be burgundy. Hello, Miss Jones. Why, Jimmy, what are you doing here? I came to see the healer. Well, Dr. Holden hasn't time today. I just want to see him for a minute. I know, Jimmy, but he's too busy. Hey, soldier. Where were you going? Well, Miss Joan was just showing me around. Well, weren't you coming in to see me? Sure we were. Weren't we, Miss Joan? Yes, of course. Well, I should hope so. You'll come in right now. The idea of an old soldier not coming in to see his pal. Some dump you got here. <laughs> Do you like it, Jimmy? <laughs> oh, it's pretty fancy, but the pool ain't so bad. No, the pool ain't so bad. How is everything up there now, Jimmy? Mm, not so good. I think she's worried. You think who's worried? Miss Evelyn. What's she worried about? You. Give me an idea. Come on. Is Dr. Holden in his office? No. He left with a little crippled boy. Hello, Mick. Oh! Hey, those are coming along fine, aren't they? Yeah, I'm glad you're back, Doc. I'm glad to be back, too. Are you here for good, Doc? Wish I were. How are you, Jackie? I'm fine. Well, they're going to take these children for their sun baths. Yeah, They'll pull the poor man apart. Yes, you're How right. have you been feeling, Rich? Well, yeah. That means you, too, Monkey. See you later, Doc. Uh, Good-bye. Good Bye, Doc. Bye, Doc. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ah, it's 
certainly is good to be back. This is real, something you can hang on to. We've missed you. I've missed you all, too. Isn't it silly the way a man can be so busy doing nothing? <laughs> I told you he wasn't going to marry Miss Joan. You know, I only went up there because I expected it would help these children, but you've no idea how a man with the best intentions in the world can become so involved. You understand, don't you? <laughs> yoo -hoo! Fred, darling, have you forgotten we're dressing for dinner? I understand. Goodbye, Ellen. Hey, the way you're chewing that tree, a man think it was a beaver. Well, I've been as busy as one. <laughs> when you swing that axe, your right hand don't know what your left hand's doing. Hey, you've got such educated hands. Say, just for fun, I'd like to see you try my job. Writing good checks. Like the one you wrote to build a sanitarium, huh? <laughs> What is all that smoke? Brush fire. Close? Medium. Any danger? No, it's going the other way. You sure of that? The wind's blowing away from us. Supposing it changes. If it changes enough to blow a few sparks across the creek, then we get kind of warm around here. Everything's so darn dry. Where are you going? Well, take a look at the fire at the top of that hill. Come on. in the lookout tower. Fire out of control north of here. Yeah, sanitarium and pool are safe, unless you jump the creek. Okay. It's a lovely party, Doctor. Best of the season. Listen, don't forget, Doctor. You promised to dance. I've been looking for you. I've been looking for you too, Joan. About you and me, this situation, it's impossible. Oh, 
Can we talk about that tomorrow? No, I'm leaving tonight. Now. Hey, Joe. This is our dance. Yeah. Smells hot, and I don't like it. Sure look bad from the hill. Think it'll come this way? When a fire runs wild, it goes wherever it feels like going. Anything we can do? Let's go and see if we can't cheer her up. All right. She's about to jump the creek. We need more help. Come on, Jimmy. Servants, Bradshaw. Get shovels, picks, axes, anything to fight the fire with. Then join us at the main building. Come on, Applejack. Quiet, please. Quiet, ladies and gentlemen. Stop that music. Quiet. Now the fire up there on the hills is getting serious. Why don't somebody put it out? This is no joke. Doctor Thornton, you get the sick patients out of the sanitarium safely. Right. Every able-bodied man report to Bradshaw in front of the garage. You're all going to help fight this fire. <laughs> By whose orders? By my orders. Here's a chance for you to do something unselfish, something useful. A whole countryside's in danger. People are being driven out of their homes. Now, come on, let's get going. You can't, you can't order my servants around and bully my guests. Don't pay any attention to him. Just go on with the party. Don't move, anybody. <laughs> that means you. Uh, yes, sir. No, you're not going to pass out. You're going to work like the others. All right, Bradshaw, Applejack, take them over and get them overalls, tools, anything you got. All right, let's get going now. Doctor, is there anything we can do? You better get packed. There's nothing you can do. Don't be too sure, young man. I was born in a covered wagon, and my mother cooked in the mining camp. Take me along, Doctor. I just crave excitement. All right, Applejack, bring him along. All right, come on, sisters, come on. All right, follow up. Come on, get in there. There's no room in Get in, get in, get in anyway. You'll fit easier by the time we get back. Come on. That's the door. Let her go. All right, stop here. Get those shovels in action. Come on. Start to cut a break right up in there. All right, everybody. Come on, follow me. There are breaks from here straight over the creek. Okay.
I wonder how he's making out. We're lucky to be in a safe place like this. Yes, aren't we? Hey, I'll bet some of those kids are scared. Imagine being afraid of a little fire. <laughs> and so, the golden-haired prince climbed and climbed to the fairy princess in the tower. <laughs> And there, there on the balcony, was the fairy princess. That's right, boys. Get this cleared out as fast as you can. I'm sorry about that punch, old man. Forget it. It's my fault. All right, you get a hold of the little Lord. Have we got a yeah, house fire? How's the fire? Why, Mr. Bradshaw, what are you doing here? Where's Dr. Holden? He's gone toward the ridge. <laughs> oh, I can't. Do not be a fine chance. Miss Evelyn, you don't have to hide anything from me. You're worried. Yes, to me, I am. The wind's changed, Jimmy. I have to get the children out. You've got to help me. Let's go.
60 miles an hour. You want to make something of it? 